Hi, it's Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. I'm happy to see all of you. I'm taking your questions. You can ask me anything. You can ask me personal stuff. You can ask me about my events. You can ask me, you know, well, one of the things, you know, I'm going to answer is, is this valuable? You know, you have specific objects you want to know, is it valuable? I'll answer that. So I'm going to answer your questions and you can put them right in the comments. And I hope you will, of course, put your, your, your opinions in the comments too. I want to know what your opinions are on some of the the um, questions and such, and even my answers. I want to know the opinions on that too. My newsletter, I want to say I had a great, a great, great time at the class and my newsletter, I'll talk about classes in a minute. Um, you can subscribe to it. It's free, F-R-E-E. -E. We love free. <laughs> the free newsletter is at drlaurieb.com. And for those of you who have signed up for the newsletter, I think that's great. Um, remember, of course, that what you can do is you can actually go and update your profile of the newsletter. So give us your, your email address there, and then you can go in and update. Because a lot of you are not taking advantage of all that the newsletter offers. So you're getting the newsletter free. It's coming into your email box, but you're not getting all of the other things like, you know, we'll give you alerts when we do something new, when there's a new video, those kinds of things. A lot of stuff, you have to go in and you have to update your profile, click on the ones that you want and all the different things that we offer that we give for free through the newsletter and click on those. And, you know, it's also for new folks who didn't sign up yet for the newsletter. So if you didn't sign up yet, it's easy to do. DrLaurieV.com, right there where it says sign up, sign up for the newsletter and you'll get it too. So great. And you can see it right here. It's at the bottom. It says sign up for Dr. Lori's newsletter, uh, newsletters and alerts. And basically it's really easy. My staff has done a great job with making it easy for all of you. So take advantage of it. <laughs> anyway, it's good to see all of you. Thanks so much. Do Mallorca pearls have value? Yes, Stephanie. Stephanie actually was in the class last night um, and when I, that I was teaching about how to sell old stuff for profit. Um, a couple of different things. Mallorca pearls are very, very, I was in the factory of, of, in Palma de Mallorca where they make Mallorca pearls and a very fa fascinating process. Again, they're not cultured pearls, but they're very beautiful pearls and they're hard to tell how good they are. Uh, hard to tell that they're not cultured pearls. Um, of course, they have a beautiful, consistent luster, and they are made of fish skeletons, and then they are basically produced in a manner that relates to, of course, the traditions of the sea and naturally developed pearls. Um, they're very nice. Um, a 30-inch, uh, a 24-inch long uh, strand of Mallorca pearls could run you up to $500, but it depends on the quality of yours if that has a 14-karat gold class. So there's an idea of value. So yeah, they can they can be pretty pricey, and they're very nice. Question about glidden fish casseroles. Okay, I did a vid, a glidden, American art glidden pottery of Alfred, New York um, video, mid-century modern pottery. And a lot of you, I was surprised to learn, knew nothing about glidden. Glidden is a major name in American art pottery of the mid-century modern time period, um, like Janeway pieces and other pieces of that time period. Um, the fish casseroles I actually featured, and I showed you which ones were most valuable on that video. So if you haven't seen it, you might want to go look for it or use our binge link. Um, fish casserole sets. I saw one for sale in a shop for 30 bucks in black, not the blue one I showed. I showed a blue fish casserole. What does this mean? Uh, American um, art pottery. Basically, it's a fish casserole. It has an image of a fish. And when you take the lid off the casserole dish, the cooking oven cooking baking dish, Underneath, you could see, in fact, the um, the uh, skeleton of the fish, all hand painted, all hand done. Beautiful work, just gorgeous. Um, their glazes are gorgeous. Their painting is gorgeous. Is that more valuable and rare? So she's saying, hey, you know, the blue one is evaluated much more than the black one. Here's what it is: the black one should have been priced much higher, much higher. So the person who decided to sell it for thirty dollars doesn't know what they're doing in terms of evaluating the market. And I had this example today because um, there's one example, but no, it's not that the blue one is more rare. Both of them are worth a lot more than $30. And I talk about their value, of course, on that video about Glidden. So check out the other videos. Thank you very much for the super chat and the super stickers. No BS, no argue. I appreciate it. It does support the channel and it shows your appreciation. So thank you for that. I'll keep working at it. Thank you, Steph. I appreciate that too. Um, yeah, yeah, Steph was in the class last night and she was saying that she didn't really like jewelry. She didn't really seem to be some a jewelry girl, if you will. I would consider myself a jewelry girl. And um, interestingly enough, she said, I didn't really care. But 
all of a sudden I started to watch the channel. I started to learn more about jewelry and I got excited and I'm kind of enjoying it. So that's what this should be. This should be fun. This should be fun as you learn. So that's great. Um, so I was saying one of the points, and then I'll get back to this alpaca uh, situation, um, that question. But I had the I had the situation today. Today I was on a video call with a very nice gentleman who bought a piece of silver, and he said, "I looked this up, and I actually found some auction sites that said this particular piece is from the 18th century." Established, well-known auction that that you would recognize their name had a similar piece by a similar maker with the same hallmark, right, from Europe on this particular piece. And they said it was from the 18th century. That would make it from the 1700s. And I said, that piece is from the 19th century or the 1800s. He said, but I saw that it's the same piece and I saw it on an auction site. I said, well, the auction site is incorrect. And he kind of stopped. Like, how could you say that? I said, I can say that for two reasons. First of all, the actual maker is not working in the 1700s because he's not born yet. That's one problem. If you're not born yet, you're not making pieces in that particular century. And the second situation was, in fact, that right on the actual piece, it was dated 1851. Well, 1851 is the 19th century. So the auction site got it wrong. So it, when he was doing his research, and the guy was doing his research, it's not his fault. He's doing his research and he's looking at this piece and he's so happy because he finds the piece just like his, just like the one that he had me appraise. And he goes, I thought I had the answer and now I don't have the answer. Right, because that information was wrong from the established auction house. You can't always believe what you find online. You have to make sure you get the accurate information. So check your sources. Anyway, I wanted to mention that because it related to that other um, that other problem with respect to the Glidden piece. But a lot of good information right here. So I'm going to try to help you. What is alpaca silver? I was told there's no silver in it. Alpaca is, in fact, a silver colored metal. I talk about alpaca. I talk about it on my website. I've talked about it on other. Uh, when I talk about silver marks, there's a whole, there's a couple videos, more than a couple on silver marks and also how you identify different types of silver. That's here on the channel. The binge link, people. <laughs> the binge link uh, will help you with that. But yes, alpaca does not have so silver content, not in alpaca. It's other things. It's other materials together. They would call it a mix metal, a mix metal. Sometimes I refer to that as a base metal, right? That kind of thing. Thank you, Shannon. I appreciate being priceless. You're priceless too. You're all priceless. And speaking of priceless, don't forget about our merchandise. That's right. The Dr. Lori t-shirts, you know, Dr. Lori says I'm priceless. <laughs> so, you know, there it is. I'm priceless. And you are, you're all priceless, but think about those. If you want to support the channel too, it's easy to purchase those pieces, but yeah, I want you to take advantage of the newsletter because there's a lot in it and there's a lot of other things that we provide for you. The website is always a good resource. And uh, of course, I love to hear your questions and I want to know your, your comments. So for example, with the alpaca, are you surprised that there are things that look like silver that are marketed as silver, but don't have any silver in it at all? Are you surprised at that? A lot of people are buying silver for the smelt weight, right? Or the resale value, the resale to buy it and say, okay, well, I've got this piece. I'm just going to, I'm just going to melt it down. Be careful of that because you could, you're going to lose the, the design value of those old pieces and the age and the, of course, um, uh, the fact that you have an antique value, how old it is. I'm wondering, are all American brilliant period crystals going to be marked? No, Sarah, no. A lot of American brilliant cut crystal pieces are not marked. The way you tell who made them is by the pattern. And it's a, it's an art and a science, let me tell you. So that's a very good question. Um, basically, do a lot of you have American Brilliant Cut pieces that you're looking at? Or a lot of you are looking for them because there's going to be a strong revival of them. A lot of people are going to be looking for them. Um, I did a big video call appraisal on just that this afternoon. And it, very, very beautiful pieces. But again, some of them were, in fact, unmarked. And thank you for that super chat. I appreciate that one, too. I did not see the name. I apologize. Um, but basically, there, it's Judy. Thank you, Judy. <laughs> um, that my producers know I like to say thank you specifically. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. But yeah, so if you're looking for that, I want you to think about American Brilliant Cut Crystal and American Brilliant Cut Glass in general. Um, very, very desirable. 
Big pitchers are desirable if what you're looking for. Large bowls are desirable. Something called a nappy, which has a little finger element, right? A little finger element. It looks like a bowl with a little finger holder. Uh, you can put a candle in it too, but usually uh, called a nappy. Let me think what other ones do we typically like. People like knife rests even though in crystal, even though they're not all that expensive. They like them. Uh, so alpaca silver is not worth anything. See, see, this is where we jump. We jump over the, we're like, already we're over the fence. Wait a second. I didn't say it's not worth anything. I said it's not worth as much, right? I said it's not silver. I actually didn't even say it's not worth as much. I said it's not silver. It's not sterling. It's not 800 parts per thousand pure silver. It's not worth as much because it's a base metal. Yes, if you have a choice between you're going to buy the sterling silver piece or you're going to buy, buy the alpaca piece and they are priced the same, buy the sterling silver piece. Don't buy the alpaca piece. But alpaca is, of course, has a value depending on the piece. You could always send me a picture if you have, if you have a question. Where do you send a picture? Right on the homepage of the website. It says, send a photo, get a report, click on it, attach three photos, fill out the short form so I know how to get back in touch with you, and I review those images. It's me. With these two big brown eyes, I'm the one who reviews them. All of you saying, someone told me, there's no someone who's telling you anything when you submit something. I'm telling you if I need more information or if we need to do a video call or whatever it might be, but I will look at those pieces. But yeah. It's not that it's not worth anything. Don't go to zero. You know what I mean? You go from, it could be something to zero. It's not zero. It's basically, it can't have a value, but we have to see what it is. Thank you, Janice. Thank you for the super sticker. I hope many of you will. And Tiffany, thank you so much, Tiffany. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. When you do that, I, I, I learn and I know and I feel, oh, okay, this is helping them. You know, the, the, the channel's helping, you're enjoying it, you're learning stuff, you're, you're being part of the community. And a great community at my classes. Uh, the classes are a lot of fun. I, I enjoy them as much as all of you do. Um, the selling classes, another selling class coming up, you know, how to sell your old stuff so you understand how to do that. Information about all the different online platforms, information about how do you make you know, money if you're spending so much money on shipping, all of that kind of stuff. Um, so I hope that you will look into the classes and don't forget about the class with appraisals. That's a very popular one too. Can you tell us about Sabino opalescent glass? Yeah. Hi, Melanie. So opalescent glass, in fact, is coming, you know, iridescent glass really had a lot of interest because of Fenton and many of the other manufacturers. Opalescent glass in general didn't have as much um, of a force behind it, I think. So we've seen a lot about iridescent glass, iridescent glass, iridescent glass, and now we're starting to see a change. And that's very, very typical in art movements in general. When you start to see opalescent glass, right, change and be very desirable after a time when everybody was looking at iridescent glass, like carnival glass or Fenton glass and that kind of thing. So opalescent glass and Sabino glass specifically is going to hold its value very well, probably for the next five years. Then you're going to see that go again. You know, all of these objects work in, in um, what we would call cycles, right? So for example, I've been known to say, well, you know, your the music, the vinyl records or the eight track tapes or the cassette tapes tend to be about a five-year span or a 10-year span. Usually it's a 10-year span for music. Then we start to see that type of music come back again. When it comes to glass, glass usually works in a five-year span. So we're collecting it, collecting it, collecting it for about five years, the same type, and then it falls out of favor and a different glass takes its place and we collect that for about five years and then it falls out of favor again. I've been studying patterns of collecting for decades how we collect, why we collect certain things, and when something will be valuable. That's why I'm able to teach these courses on how do you sell? What do you do? And that's why I know when the next hot thing is going to be. I have predicted the next hot thing in art, antiques, and collectibles for a long, long time. So, you know, remember that. Lisa Marie, thank you very much for your super sticker here. I appreciate that. I know that those super stickers show me that you guys are getting something out of the channel, and I think that's great. Um, I want to hear about your comments. Are you surprised by that, that there are these cycles that relate, of course, to when we collect something or how we collect something? When something spikes, it's not only anniversaries. So, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you for your super sticker, too. I'm glad we're saving you time. That's what I like to see. I like to see, hey, this is what I think when you tell me something like that. Hi, Chris. Chris is here. 
Um, yeah, yeah, it is. It's easy. Evaluations are easy. Great. Um, yo, yeah, oh, you're so sweet. Thank you, Timothy. Thank you for your support too. I am the real deal. I've been doing this a long time. Um, I do like it though. It's great. Will milk glass come back? Hi, Patricia. Patricia's been in my classes too. Um, milk glass, I think has already come back. I don't think it ever really left. <laughs> I just think what happened was they manufactured so much of it. There was so much of it out there that basically we had a situation where, um, there's so much of it out there that you, you flooded the market, kind of the way a lot of markets have been flooded post pandemic. People are like, what do you mean? Well, a lot of us during lockdown were, you know, uh, obviously most of us were supposed to be locked down, right? In our homes, going through all of our stuff, starting to put things onto the market, right? Whether it was onto eBay or onto another platform, right? Um, so basically what you start to see is you start to see that when that happens, when people have an opportunity to sort of review all the stuff and take stock in what they've got, a lot of that becomes a flooded market and a flooded market usually sees values go down. So when you say, are they going to make a comeback? There's been a lot of milk glass out on the market. Um, and oftentimes it sells very well, usually summertime. So uh, thank you, Rose. Thank you very much. I appreciate that too. I'm glad. I want you to not only uh, learn things here, I want you to have fun here. And of course, you know, comments from everybody else is what I like to see too. And also, if you have a particular, hi, Shannon. Shanna, Shanna's here. Um, a couple of different things. If you, um, thank you for your super sticker. If you, in fact, uh, have another channel that you watch a lot and you say, you know what, Dr. Lori and this person who I watch a lot might be a great um, idea for collaborating. Um, I want you to, of course, let them know and have them get in touch because, of course, uh, collaborations are a lot of fun too for us as well as for you. We see that a lot of our collaborations are very popular with you guys. And don't forget, of course, to rewatch those. Use the binge link and rewatch those videos that you might have missed or that you didn't get all the information from. Here's Deborah. Timeless Jewels by Deborah. Oh, thank you very much. That's funny. The binge link is worth its weight in gold and silver. Well, you know, Deborah would know. She sells jewelry. Um, thank you for the super chat. A couple of things about the binge link. The binge link was just made so it would be easier for you guys because a lot of you were saying, oh, I can't keep track. Oh, I'm not getting an alert. Oh, this and that. So we tried to make it easier. And the other thing that would make it easier for you guys, for us, is if you will read some of those pages. You know, we're answering a lot of questions two or three times here because folks are just not reading the pages on the website. You know, we update the website. I know a lot of websites are not updated, but questions like, will Dr. Lori do this? And when is Dr. Lori doing that? And can you check this event or that again? It's all on the website. If you go to the events page at drlorev.com and you click events and you scroll down, you're going to find everything. There's calendars there. Everything is updated and we update regularly. So the, those guys are constantly updating that website. So, oh, it's not there. It's there. So we really would like you to do a little bit more of that. Is carnival glass in the same realm as milk glass? Not really, Diana. Good question, though. So there's a lot of different types of glasses. So milk glass actually is a type of glass that has a milky uh, look. It's trying to look like ceramic. It's trying to look like porcelain, like white porcelain, but it's made of glass, so it's more inexpensive to produce. Carnival glass is iridescent glass. So what they do is they take the glass and they mix it with metallic salts and it gives it this nice glittery kind of a look. So that glittery type kind of look, which is an iridescent, is what carnival glass is. And carnival glass can come in many different colors. Um, typically it's in a marigold color or an azure blue purple color. But carnival glass and milk glass are not really the same. So if you had to put them in different categories, there are so many categories of glass, right? There's opaline glass, there's opalescent glass, there's milk glass, there's, of course, um, uh, iridescent glass, there's cased glass, there's blown glass, there's, you're getting these? <laughs> this is the list, bump, 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 bump. You know, um, there's a lot of different types of glasses out there. There's clear glass, then there's crystal. I was telling the story I was telling the story at the class last night. I'll repeat the story. So um, we were talking about lead and lead crystal. And I was uh, going through TSA, I travel all the time, as you well know, to events. And uh, I was going through TSA and I had been given a paperweight, which was lead crystal. And it was in my carry-on bag. And it was a form of a little, of a lion. And it was lead crystal. So it had 25, 24%, at least 24% by definition lead in this paper, in this 
crystal paperweight. So, you know, it it basically, you know, takes off, it, it, it sets off all of the alarms and the sirens and the whole thing at TSA. And all of a sudden I find myself in one of those little TSA rooms and they're telling me, you know, take off your pants. I'm not kidding. I mean, they were like, we want to know what you've got on you. I'm like, I've got nothing on me. I had a paperweight in the bag, you know, because even I, who knows better, I know better, right? I had the metal, right? The lead in the paperweight in the, in the carry-on. Cause I thought, oh, it's going to, it's going to break if I put it in the, um, if I put it in my, my other bag that goes, of course, underneath the, the underneath the, the body of the plane. I'm thinking, oh gosh, Lori, but that was true. I ended up actually, they told me you've got to go and, you know, we got to see everything. <laughs> so I made friends with the TSA people that day. But yeah, 24% lead is the percentage that you have to have in order for a piece to be deemed crystal. So it's important. That's why I always tell you it's going to be heavy and it's going to be very clear if you see, look through it. So that's one of the things that you say. Hi, Lori. Lori supports the channel and I appreciate it. I appreciate you supporting the channel in all different ways. Thank you. Don supports the channel and I appreciate it. You know, video chats, Trina supports the channel and I appreciate it. So thank you very much. All that you're doing uh, makes it, yeah, hit the like button. Yeah, listen to Don, hit the like button and don't forget to share and don't forget to watch. You know, you're going to watch these videos. So that's great. Diana Fair, I had to miss, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that you that you missed the class. Um, you of course do not. If you sign up for a class, you do not have to. You do not have to take class one, part one before part two. You don't have to take. You could take part two before part one. It doesn't matter. I just only did those parts because I wanted people to realize it was different content about the same general topic. But you know, try not to miss classes. You know, you don't want to be missing classes. You want to make sure that that class becomes, you know, a priority for you. So no, you know, but I am sorry you missed it, but no, um, just look on the thing and see when you can sign up for another one. You just see when that, when you can sign up for another class. Yep. That's fine. But again, you can't just miss a class and think that, oh yeah, I can just do another one. You have to sign up for another class, but try to try very hard to keep those appointments. It'll help you too. Hi, Roger. Roger, it's nice to see you. And thank you for your support. I appreciate it. Roger's been in some of the classes too. A lot of you have been in the classes and the classes are fun, not only because of me. Yeah, sure. We all know I'm fun, but <laughs> because, you know, the community is fun and you can learn a lot from your fellow, I'll call them class members as students, but basically you can, you can learn a lot from your fellow class members. They have great ideas. You know, a lot of them are all different levels, right? You could be a beginner, you could be advanced, you could be you know, a pro, it doesn't matter because it's going to help, everybody's going to help everybody else. But uh, the classes have been very well received and I'm proud of that and happy for that. So um, yeah, been, been watching, Mary, you'll be seeing it again. As I said, you've got to check out the event schedule because we update the events all the time. I was in, I was in New York recently, in fact, for, um, for a, uh, a work, a work, uh, a work, uh, what would I call that? Um, I can't really say much more about what I was doing, but it was for work. <laughs> I was in New York. Uh, there are certain things that I have to, I can't disclose because of uh, contractual arrangements. So that's okay. But yeah, I expect, of course, New York will be coming up on the event schedule. You just have to check it out. Um, is all milk glass marked? I've seen a lot of it marked, um, but not all. I mean, I never say all. That's a big generalization, Asunta, but good question. Um what kind of animal is that? Is that a dog? Is that a cat? What is that? Was it, it was a it was a pet with a with a hat on. I don't know. If you can guess what kind of animal Asunta has there, <laughs> let us know. Uh, Lisa, thank you for the super chicker, the super sticker. I appreciate it. Um, and of course, I want your comments. You know, do you put clothes on your dogs? That's what I'd like to know. Hi, Melanie. What a nice picture there near the Louvre. You can see, of course, the Louvre Museum in the background. Um, Thank you. I'm glad that everything is, that it is popular. What other questions have you got for me? I'll answer any of them, right? Folks were asking me questions about my collections. Folks were asking me questions about what's actually um, on my table. We, the, uh, the studio staff changes this out. So we have different tables, um, different items all the time. Is Dr. Lori wearing a Gucci watch? I uh, know I wish. <laughs> it is not a Gucci watch tonight. This is a citizen's watch. This watch I like. I'll tell you why I like this watch. Because I like to do, I like things to work for me, right? This watch, if you just put it out in the sun, right? You just put it out in the sun. As long as it gets some light, it'll keep going. No batteries, no nonsense, nothing. And I like the gold. I like the big, I like the 
the uh, basket weave pattern too. I like that I don't have to worry about it, that it stays on my wrist. It's a little big and now big is out. You know, I was with one of my sisters who's very chic, chic, you know, fashion chic with the makeup and she's very, you know, she's very good about all that. And her watch is so tiny and I'm wearing my big, huge old watch. And she's like, Lori, that is so out. I'm like, I know, but I love it. I don't care because I can't see. So, you know, I want to be able to see, but actually I can see pretty well when my glasses are on. <laughs> anyway, he's a Cornish Rex. Oh, well, he's very beautiful, Asunta. I don't think he needs the hat. I think he's pretty good looking without the hat. Well, thank you for getting back and telling me because I like to see that. I like to know. <laughs> That's cool. Do you guys dress up your animals? I have uh, another relative who dresses up her little, her, I call them the yippy dogs. Their dogs are like this big, right? They're little like Bichons. Dresses them up for the holidays, puts a little garland, a wreath around the neck and garland, and, you know, and Halloween costumes and the whole thing. So kind of fun. I'm wondering if any of you do that with pets. One of these days, I'm going to show you all my pets, right? Oh, uranium glass, Heather. Yes, uranium glass, definitely valuable, more valuable than a lot of them. And if you don't have my black light, you may want to get it. The black light will help you to spot that uranium glass that might be hiding. It's a lot easier to, to notice uranium glass um, in the evening rather than, of course, uh, during the day. Um, but uranium glass, also known as Vaseline glass, you can find that actually with my uh, black light, which is on the specials and shop page. You can choose it there. Um, if you, of course, if you purchase something from the website at drlaurieV.com, the specials and shop page, scroll down, scroll down the specials and shop page. It'll say go shopping now. Click on the go shopping now. It'll take you to a web page, which will take you to our, my recommended products. And yes, I get compensation if you make a purchase. So um, it's through affiliates. And basically, it looks just like that. The good old loop is there, the money magnet, that loop. If you haven't gotten a loop yet, you got to get a loop. You really need them. They're great. Anyway, so um, that's how you do it. And it's really easy to do on the specials and shop page. That first page when you come and you're on your cell phone or your smartphone and you get to drlaurieb.com, that first page has a lot of good stuff on it. And it's pretty easy to navigate, right? You can put your name in the bottom for you to sign up for the newsletter. You can, well, you can learn about me. You can see my event schedule. You can search for something. Say you have something that's not on this page. Just go to the search and type it in the box. And then the specials and shop page is right there at the top in the red click. And then a lot of stuff is there too. So easy for you to do. Questions. I'm taking your questions. What are they? The difference between a pin and a brooch. Size, Randy. A pin is small. A brooch is big. So think of brooch, big, pin, small. Pin, puny, brooch, big. Is that easy? That should be easy enough. A pin is puny, a brooch is big. That's the difference. Oftentimes, brooches will also have um, set gemstones in them where pins don't. But like what I'm wearing on this side, what I'm wearing here is a fleur-de-lis. I would consider this a pin, not a brooch. A brooch has to have some size and weight and usually have some stones or pearls or other added elements, um, that kind of thing, or, or adornments. Uh, very good question, though. Thank you, Randy. Um, Randy's here a lot and, of course, supports the channel, too. Uh, but pins are smaller, puny, right? Pins and then brooches are bigger. That's usually the difference. Uh, that's what we typically will say. I mean, I've seen that as the example. The water in the painting behind you looks so real. This is a painting by an artist named Frank Lind. Um, taught many, many, many students at the Pratt Institute for years, a fantastic American artist. I would argue one of the best American artists in the country, if not the best. And I'll argue that with anybody. And uh, I know a lot about art. So, you know, you probably don't want to argue with me <laughs> but about that. But this particular piece is a wonderful piece. And he spoke at an exhibition that I curated once years ago of his work. And he said, I'm trying to capture not only the movement of the wave, but the time. And that was very interesting to me when he stood there and explained this. He wants to show you how, let me move that down so you can really see it, to show you, in fact, that it's not only a movement of the wave or the colors of the wave and of the waves, in fact, but in fact, the time that's passing as the waves are moving. I love seascapes. I think they're very wonderful. Um, I'm very fortunate to have this one on the set here. So uh, it's, it's really wonderful. But yeah, I think it does look very real. Um, the surfer is great, but those waves, you really think those waves are going to crash, you know, but uh, oh, fantastic. Uh, the studies are very beautiful too. He'll do studies for these pieces and then make them quite big. You can, you can check him out at franklin.com, I think. 
but you can search for him online too. Anyway, you can search for a lot of great artists and you guys have been searching for great art and you've been finding great art uh, at thrift stores, yard sales, estate sales. What have you been finding? I want to know, put it in the comments. Tell me what you've been finding lately. Is it, e hi Ivan, is it easy to identify Staffordshire porcelain cats? Yes, yes. I learned they make a lot of reproductions. That's exactly true. But identifying the Staffordshire porcelain cats, I talked about them and how you will identify them in not only some of the videos that are my live videos, my Ask Dr. Lori live videos, where I appraise pieces for people, but also um, I talk about Staffordshire on the website at drlaurieV.com under research, right? You hit the research tab, or you can just search for Staffordshire on the website. Um, but I also talked about it in an event video where um, we saw some. Typically, the way to identify them, if you want to send a picture, um, then we can do a better job of how to identify them. It's always good to see a picture. Kelly, thank you for the for the super sticker. I appreciate that. But a couple of things about, about the Staffordshire items in general. Um, first of all, very nice ceramic, usually hand-painted figural pieces. What you're talking about are the two cats. Usually they look at each other, but there are many, many, many reproductions coming out of Asia, and they have been since about the 1950s or 60s. So, you know, you might find an older piece, but it's still a reproduction. So Staffordshire pieces are not always marked. Uh, but in fact, when you look at them and you start to identify the way the face is painted, you'll be able to spot the real from the fake and I'll help you do it. Yep. Good, good. Jim Sessions paintings valuable. Lynn, I have to see a picture. So if you can send me a picture, that would be great. I Now I'll tell you, are they valuable? Yes, they'll have some value. What's that value? I need to see a picture and I need to have dimensions and I need to have materials, that kind of thing. That's what we're looking at. So that's great. That's great. So, um, but yeah, I want to know what you guys have been finding. I want to know what you guys have been thinking about collecting. Are you thinking about starting new collections? Um, what do you think? What do you think? And speaking of something, of course, uh, I'm thinking of something exciting and new. Uh, I'm coming back to Atlanta in one of my events. I have uh, an event in Atlanta, Georgia coming up. And I spent many, many happy years in Atlanta. I was taping a show that you may remember called Auction Kings. And you can watch Auction Kings and my appraisals of many great objects with, of course, the great folks from Discovery Channel's Auction Kings. Um, you know, you can just search for it and find it. But I'm coming back to Atlanta, and a lot of you have been asking about that. I want to, of course, um, I want to know if I should, in fact, visit a thrift shop that you might be familiar with in, Atlanta, in the Atlanta area. Is there a favorite thrift shop that you have? Which one should I go to or which ones should I go to and tape or film and then feature them on the channel? If you have a favorite Atlanta area thrift shop, I want to know about it. Ask them if they want to invite me to come and tape in their thrift shop. Of course, it'll be good for their thrift shop. It'll be good for all of you too. So um, if you have that, ask them if they want to invite me to be come through their thrift shop and feature it here on the channel. I want to know about it. So yeah, that's that's exciting. I'm looking forward to a trip to Atlanta. Can you tell me the how, can you tell me how to tell the difference between a lithograph and a print? Hi Tina. Tina, a lithograph is a print. Okay? So, you're telling the difference between a lithograph and a print. All right. Now, first of all, there that is a print. So, think of it this way. Everything's a print, right? Here's the umbrella term for prints and underneath that umbrella are lithographs and serographs, silk screens and etchings, engravings and mono prints and okay. So a lithograph actually is a print. How do you tell if you have a lithograph? I have showed you this on many of my videos. I've talked about how you how you tell the different types of lithography, whether it's offset lithography or not. Um, I've taught taught it to you with respect to using the loop which is easy to use. You might have to get used to the loop a little bit, moving it a little bit so you're, until your eye will focus with it. But that's another thing that you're thinking. But the difference between a lithograph and a print is nothing because a lithograph is a print. Uh, Kristen, Christina, thank you very much for your, for your support. How collective are our Australian Studio Anna pieces? We have a large collection. Oh, you do? That's great. That's great. Because my grandfather befriended Jungwirth in World War II Czechoslovakia. Oh, interesting. That's interesting. I'd like to see them. How big a collection, right? Um, you know, is a large collection for you 10 pieces, 100 pieces? 
The fact that you have direct provenance will increase the value of your collection versus someone else's collection. Right? So that's going to be important. Um, but they're going to be collectible. Anytime you see something like that, high, high quality, well-made, known throughout the world, an international presence, that's important too. So Diana says, come to Arizona. Diana, I don't know about you, but I don't, I don't crash weddings. I don't just show up places. Someone has to invite me. So do you have an organization that would like to invite me to come and do my appraisal show in Arizona? If you do, that's one of the ways to get me to a particular area, right? Maybe you have a charity that you want support for, right? Maybe they want to say, oh, we're going to invite Dr. Lori and then we're going to sell tickets. People do that. So if you want me to come to Arizona, I'd love to come. I've been there many, 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 many times. Um, in fact, for TV, for events, for just fun. I mean, Arizona is great. I have a lot, a lot of friends and clients there Then I suggest that you find someone who says, you know what, this would be a great thing for my fill in the blank, my financial advisor event or my school or my community center or my convention hall or my home show, whatever it might be. Ask around, see if they want to host me and I'll be happy to come to Arizona. That'd be great. Our false crest pizza. Yeah, Denise, they are. Oh, the cats are out tonight. Look at the cats. <laughs> false craft pieces are valuable. Yes. It depends on which ones and how old, whether or not you have um, stoneware covered pieces, uh, baking pieces, but false craft can be pretty desirable. A lot of people collect them. They collect false craft uh, the same way that they collect things like Pyrex and Corning and others. Um, certain patterns are going to be very popular. I like the traditional false craft brown you know, that, that nice muted brown color false craft pieces. That's just a personal taste thing. But yes, all of them can be valuable. It depends on which piece so you can know exact value, right? So don't just look around the internet and say, oh, Joe's selling it for this. So that must be the, the value of it. Remember, Joe may not know any more or he might know less than you know about it. So yeah. Hey, John, how are things, John? Um, you know, oh, isn't that nice? I love it when you're nice to the staff because I can't do all this without them. I cannot do it. Forget it. Forget it. Be, you know, lights off, cameras off if it's not for the staff. The staff does it all. They do a lot. Um, so thank you for recognizing them. And uh, I had a wonderful time in Pittsburgh with lots of you. John happened to be one of those lots of you. A lot of people drove from other places to see me at my live event, too. I thought that was lovely. We had a wonderful time. Um, it's always good to, of course, see all of you guys um, all over where you all are all over the country. So don't forget about collaborations. Um, you know, and, and then, you know, I want to know your, you know, I want to know your reactions to some of the things, because a lot of you in the comments, you know, you'll say, oh my gosh, I can't believe Dr. Lori said that. So give me a chance to tell you why I said something. Right. Uh, I want to know that as well. Yeah. So some, some great, great questions. Let's see. I do Brenda. I appraise quilts. I've actually even, um, written some publications on quilts. So I have a, a good knowledge base about quilts. I like quilts. I have, I'll tell you a personal thing. I have quilts in my home, in my guest rooms, and also um, in certain bedrooms. I do have quilts. I like quilts. I think they're fun. I think they're nice and cozy. I like quilts. I can't quilt. I'm not a good sewer, seamstress. Can't do that. But never really learned that, that particular skill. But I, um, I will say that I do like to work with yarn and such. Uh, is bleak valuable? Yes, yeah, Stacy, Bleak, the beautiful, whether it's Willits Bleak, the American Bleak, or of course, um, you can find Bleak from um, Ireland, gorgeous Perry and China pieces. Um, I've appraised some of the really high-end ones into the multi-thousands, um, all the way down to smaller pieces that were, uh, you know, under $100. But yes, Bleak can be valuable. Um, and there are different colored marks. You know, there's a black mark, a green mark on Bleak. So look for that as well. Great questions tonight. Great to see all of you guys too. Don't forget to put your, um, your comments in the comments. And of course, I'm Dr. Lori. I'll see you next time.